we want to write less code. I know um, as a software engineer, right, code is, like people think coding, coding, but really and truly, we writing less code is the most optimal thing. So you know, um, that, yeah. So like, code is complexity, right? You, you don't want to introduce complexity. You want to keep things simple. Um, Hi everyone and welcome back to the Slave of Shea platform. I've got my good friend Clements here. This is episode two of the Career Plug series that I explained in the last video. So essentially I'm going to be interviewing some successful black professionals in their field and I'm going to be asking them questions about their role, um, how they got into their career and the real aim for me is to one, showcase black excellence. So to really try to give people an insight into different sectors that perhaps maybe they've not considered before, or perhaps maybe you're finishing uni and you're trying to really think about what it is that you want to do next. Or like I said, if you're in a bit of a career limbo and you want to kind of have more insight into different sectors and really understanding the nitty gritty of what these roles are about. So today I've kindly asked Clement to join me to talk to me about software engineering. So um, we'll just go straight into it. So Clems, do you want to um, sort of explain like what your job title is and how long you've been in the field for? Yeah, so my job title is a senior software engineer um, and I've been working in the industry for about six years now, going on seven. Wow, six years? Yeah. Wow, <laughs> that's a long time. <laughs> Dedication right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah okay. uh, it's been that long. <laughs> cool. And was that, was that always like your career choice or did you sort of happen to fall into it? Okay, so it was, it was planned. Um, I initially wanted to go into finance or law or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't want one of those sort of, because everyone did it. Everyone did finance yeah. or law and like I tend to kind of go against the pack a lot. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I started thinking about what I was good at and that led me to computer science uh, and then led me to study in IT in college and mm -hmm. then computer science in university. Um, yeah, and that's how I fell into it really. Uh, okay, and so how old were you when you first sort of got into it? Was it straight after uni or would you, like, was it straight after uni or did it sort of take some time? Uh, so it was, so I would, say, I would like to say it was at school, uh, but in reality, um, um, I, after I left school, I, I did um, business at sixth form, and okay. I didn't really enjoy that. <laughs> yeah, I, I did business a... studies as well. I think I just did it because it was called business studies. I didn't. I, I literally. I didn't even like have any. So I said, "Oh, this is business studies. Okay, it sounds good. It's something I can go home and tell my mum that I'm studying. She'll be exactly. happy." <laughs> exactly. That's exactly the the sort of thought process I was going through when I chose business, and then I kind of fell out of that. Um, and did a gap year, um, took a gap year, and then went back to college at around 17. Oh, okay. And that's when I really started to, you know, get into IT and computers and software and trying to understand how, they, how software works and, mm -hmm. and computers work. And that's how I really started, got into it, really. Um, okay. Yeah. Cool. And so what does a day in the life of a software engineer look like? I'm sure, like, days probably vary, but what, like typically is like your like what do you typically do we have this thing called a build monitor which is just to sort of allow us to see what our software is doing in the world uh, observe the state of it if you're first thing you turn that on and then maybe you go to the kitchen you know <laughs> <laughs> and uh chat to a few colleagues and depending on the team you'll have your first meeting at say 9 30 depending on the team some teams like to do that in the afternoon uh, around one two okay uh, but that's not really optimal um people like to do it in the morning get out of the way so yeah, we do that stand -ups. Stand -ups. do you have to do them like, daily stand-ups yeah 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 we have to do daily stand-ups report on like <laughs> what you were doing the previous day any right. blockers <laughs> but we keep those really brief right we keep those really brief because we have business people in there as well mm -hmm. and then after that we will have like a technical one where it's just software engineers or technical people in there and you talk about in detail anything that's blocking you mm -hmm. uh, with your work and other more experienced people or people who have faced those problems before will try and help and you okay. kind of discuss 
within yourselves what's going on. Um, so what's the, so are you able to sort of describe like the technical aspects to your role? So like for me, I just know that the software engineers are the smart guys that sit on the seventh, the second floor. That's literally all I know. I have no idea what they do, how they configure things, how it all works. I just know that they're the smart guys and every time I walk past their PCs, there's all this code on their screen. That's literally all I know. So what does like a software engineer, like what does that actually mean? Like what do they do? Uh, say so, say so smart is a you know it's it's, it's a word of contention. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it looks smart to me. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so it's 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 a we tend to have these things called problem spaces. A problem space might be the entire domain of payments or, you know, um, a shopping cart or something like that. And we will tr we'll tend to break them into features. And okay. like, you know, feature will contain, you know, maybe a back-end service or something or some sort of UI um, aspects to it. Um, we will plan, we'll do a lot of planning as to how we want to sort of implement these things. And there's a lot of talking, meetings, drawing, sketching, like how we want to... Drawing? Uh, yeah, yeah, because we have to draw up the, the architectural diagrams of the system. Architecture, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, so the systems tend to have architectural, architectural aspects to them because you want to lay things out in a certain way mm -hmm. uh, and we will we, we tend to try and get an agreement in the team mm -hmm. about how to do this because you need to get consensus team the team needs to agree and then right. after that you know you will tend to start you know code, coding up the features that you broke the system into so so it does involve like, code so i did get that part right yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of code into it, but it's yeah. not. It, it, we don't just go in and start coding. We do a lot of planning right. uh, and thinking uh, behind. But there's a lot of planning and thinking that goes into all of that before we actually start coding. Because you don't want to write code that uh, you know is wrong or you don't need. So, like, so would you say like you you need a software engineer for like every most companies? So it's it's a role that can be very what's the word I'm looking for, transferable or like a role that you can pretty much do anywhere. It's not like, it doesn't sound like it's isolated to one sector, like some other roles might be. So mm. it sounds like a pretty a good field to get into because you can pretty much take those skills and you can implement them in different industries, right? Of course, of course. Uh, uh, the only thing I'll add to that is that you want to work for a company that tech is their bread and butter, like uh, mm. you know, software. So you have like software software engineering departments that support a role um, yeah. or other or a department and those those they're not the bread and butter of the company right so they will tend to neglect that uh, function of their business because it doesn't it's not what makes them the money but right. then if you work for a fintech something like a fintech, fintech. Or, sorry <laughs> <laughs> or you know like um you know um ad tech or whatever that is tech is their bread and butter right they will put a lot of investments into the software engineering teams and you know the technical teams and those that's where you really want to be but yeah. we can we can be anywhere really we can be anywhere but you want to be where tech engineering is their bread and butter cool that makes perfect sense i think that's a good point as well for people to know so like you said you went to uni and you studied computer science did you say yeah yeah. So for you, was studying computer science really like important for what you're doing now? As in, do you feel like it made a direct impact? Because you know, sometimes you can do certain degrees at uni and not to be mean, but it kind of doesn't make a difference to whatever job it is you want to go into. Um, but do you feel like to be a software engineer, having that computer science degree made an impact for you? Okay, so that's a very good question. And um, for me, I would say it made a very big impact for me uh, because um, there, are lot, there, are, there are a lot of people doing software engineering now who didn't go to uni, they right. like make his academy and you know just learn stuff there or just self-taught themselves how to do things. Mm -hmm. But um, for me, I would say I went to uni uh, because it was it was it was good for me to you know have somewhere where everything was curated for me like you know like um what i needed to learn right 
Um, and I think if I didn't go to uni as well, I don't think I would have, like, it would have been easy for me to get my foot in the door. Because right. after I graduated, I didn't have to, you know, I hear, I hear stories about people um, in other courses, like, get, like, waiting years to get the first job, the first grad right. job. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. For me, it was like, as soon as people saw that degree, they were like, oh, like, yeah come and interview like mm -hmm. it was really quick it was like two three weeks I got my first grad job okay. um, and 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 I don't think if if I didn't go to uni I would have had that much uh I would have I would have had it easy to get into the industry um right. but there, there are other ways to to become a software engineer obviously a lot of people self-teach themselves these days yes. and um, it works um but there are fundamental things that you may not know that someone who studied soft, software engineering or computer science at uni would know, mm -hmm. and um, that will kind of mark you down a bit. Okay, yeah, that's such a good point, actually. I think that's a really important um, thing to put out there as well in terms of that kind of ease to be able to sort of step into that career from the degree. Because like you say, there's so many degrees that years and years, where's the job? <laughs> because it's not just a quick pivot from graduating straight into the job. But I think from what from what it sounds like, because computer science is very technical, there's obviously a lot of like knowledge that you would need to have. I'm not saying you don't need knowledge for other degrees, but it sounds like it's a very technical degree. So for somebody to have studied it, I think, I guess to an employer, it's like, you must know like what you're doing. Like you yeah. must know, you don't miss, not that you don't need training, but yeah, I think it's, it's a good point to know for people who are studying computer science or want to study it, that actually it's quite a good degree that can maybe pivot you quickly into that field if that's where you want to go to. Absolutely, absolutely. But I will caveat what I've just said with that um, after my first grad job, no one's asked me for <laughs> my degree since. So. Yeah, 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 so that's, yeah, that was actually yeah, a point I was going to make next because um, I find, like, even myself, I don't think anyone has ever asked me, did you go to university? Like, it might come up maybe in an interview, but no one's ever asked me to prove my degree or provide proof or anything like that. Like, I've never, ha like, had that. But at the same time, I do feel that to some extent having the degree did help me, even though I don't think it directly impacted me, but I do think it helped me in some way. Um, yes. But yeah, I think a lot of people can relate to that. Like no one's asking us for our degree um, now. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, um, so if somebody wanted to get into it, so I think you kind of sort of touched on it a little bit just then, but what kind of steps would someone want to take like as an entry level graduate, for example, or perhaps maybe I mean, maybe we can do it for if someone was a graduate like what they how they would get into it and maybe you can talk about if someone wasn't from your opinion what they would need to do to get into software engineering so if you're a graduate and you've just graduated i would say just put yourself out there and start applying and yes. um, you have a strong degree um, and employers will want to talk to you yeah um, um, but you as well as that um, uni doesn't really prepare you for sort of real, real life, um, you know, situations, real life um, problems. So I would say practice a lot, move a lot, move a lot, um, because people do things in tech differently um, with everywhere you go. So there's no one set way of doing things. So you, as, a, as a junior person coming in, mm -hmm. as a grad, you want to see all these different ways of doing things um, and understand why and the reasons um, yeah. and understand the bad ones, why you shouldn't do it that way. If you're sort of, um, if, if, it's some, if you're not a grad and it's something that you want to get into, I'll say what you need to do is, you know, start looking at conferences, start going to sort of software engineering conferences. Um, think about doing a Makers Academy, a, a boot camp that try to get you up to speed quickly on the fundamentals. A lot of companies partner with them, so like Just Eat, Just Eat, uh, Lexus Nexus, of the big names, Uber, they partner with Makers Academy, and right. what they'll do is um, they'll train you um, for I think around 5k, and um, Makers Academy, which is a 5k is already way cheaper than your standard degree, right? Um, yeah. So yeah. you know. Uh, so they will, once they train you, they'll recommend you to sort of um, these companies that they've partnered with. And, That's yeah. so good. Yeah, it's really good. So a lot of, a lot of people do that. And in sort of my day-to-day -day role, I see a lot of Makers Academy people come through. So think about doing something like that. Um, some people um, are just smart and they go online and 
pick it up. So <laughs> just if you can curate stuff yourself, maybe talk to some, someone in the industry and they will help you curate, you know, what you need to know. And you can also learn stuff online as well. So, yeah, there's, there's different ways you can go about it. Uh, yeah, it's easier if you want to have someone um, curating it through for you. Mm -hmm. That's such good advice, actually. Um, it's good to know that there's like different ways of getting into it and that, you know, your options aren't limit, limited too much. Like if you've gone to university and you've done that route, you've got the options there. But if you haven't, there's actually a whole academy that you can sign up for that would actually train you and even expose you to like job opportunities. Yep, yep, so, yep, you know. yep. Cool. So all the future software engineers out there, I hope you're taking notes. <laughs> okay. So in terms of like salaries now, so if I wanted to, if I come in as a junior or entry level software engineer, like what sort of salary would I expect to earn? So I'd say tech moves a lot very quickly. Um, uh, when I started about six years ago, I started on 25,000 pounds. Mm -hmm. um, However, I think this is we is 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 gone up to about 30 30k now. So I see a lot of juniors coming in around on around 30 to 35k. Um, so That's I would say like entry level. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I would say around 25, just to be you know conservative, 25 to 35 um, yeah. is a junior sort of rate you would be getting. Cool. And then once I've you know I've smashed all of the corners of the software engineering world i've climbed to the top i'm like the master coder <laughs> i'm like literally like at the top of the food chain like what's the sort of maybe not max but what sort of range can i expect as somebody who's like an expert in this field uh, that's a, that's a very uh that's a very good question it's also a very broad question um I, 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 and I'll, I'll, i will i will answer it like a consultant <laughs> uh, <laughs> in the sense that um it depends it depends yeah. where you are um um so you might start out as a you know junior software engineer on twenty five thousand pounds or 35 wherever you start out and you will you know progress into being a sort of lead um and you can start seeing around eighty thousand pounds mm -hmm. and then you may you know become the head of an engineering engineering department or you know CTO or, or you know um, you know CISO if you fall into security which is just a chief, chief information security officer um, and those roles tend to pay around like you know an average of let's say 200 200k so it's quite <laughs> it, it depends and then you can get people who so you have a lot of startups these days where yeah. you, you can get people who will you know break out of all of that and start their own companies and become like the founder Right. or see or whatever and the sky's the limit from that point on right so like it's yeah I, 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 this is a very broad question and it, this is like there's yeah there's so many places yeah. you could do yeah yeah, yeah. so it's, it's, it sounds like you know the opportunities are endless really um and it sounds like it's it can be quite lucrative if you've like worked hard and if you like kind of know the directions you want to go which is good of course of course um yeah. and actually just sort of touching on that so are there like standard because you kind of mentioned it a bit because you sort of spoke about like lead and then like head but are there like standard steps of progression um uh, yeah or, like or can it vary or is it is there like you know how you have some jobs where it's like you do that job then you'll be manager then you'll be lead then you'll be this like is it like that in this field or is it different it can be it can be so um it will depend a lot on the company and this is why like you will try to um, so I would say when you're interviewing, you should ask about their sort of path, path of progression um, mm -hmm. to see if they clearly have it defined. So where I'm, work where I'm working right now, um, the, the, the path of progression is, you know, you start out as a grad associate um, and then you become like a consultant um, engineer, like, which is sort of mid-level. And then you, you know, become a senior software engineer, and then from there you go on to becoming a um, a lead, and from becoming a lead engineer, you become a principal engineer, and um, that's sort of the highest um, you can become um, where I am. And that being a principal engineer is on the same level as being a CTO somewhere. Oh, okay. So, so that's sort of the highest. But then you can. 
there's standard companies that are not consultancies. Um, you can come from like a junior or grad to being a mid to, you know, a senior and then lead. And then from being a lead, um, I say you can start to manage departments and stuff like that. So people might go the managerial route, which is less technical and more dealing with people, mm -hmm. or people will go further technical and, you know, just stay where they are and, you okay. know, just progress within being technical. But I think from when you become a lead, um, it starts to blur out. It starts to blur, blur a bit in the sense that you can become whatever you want, like, the, well, I don't know, um, engineering manager, uh, managing the department, head of um, engineering, um, CTO, whatever. Um, it's just about, from when you get to that lead position, it's not as clear cut. Right. It's, yeah. Right. Um, That's good to know, actually. It sounds like you've got opportunities to progress like as on your own like you know if you're in isolation and then you have opportunities to progress if you wanted to go down like the managerial lead sort of yeah. things there are some yeah. jobs as well where you kind of can't progress unless you're going into like a managerial position and not everybody necessarily wants to do that so it's good to know that there's those options there some people just want to be really really technical so they just stay technical right yeah and they get really really good at the technical that and that's just how they progress people want to see people want them to work on stuff there because they're very good at it right? yeah yeah but, but the problem with um tech and um engineering is that when you get very good people always want to promote you into management um, yeah. and, and, <laughs> and then there's, there's a there's a running joke where people say that um the state of software engineering is in a state of um, perpetual inexperience because oh, when you get very inexperienced when you get very experienced people want to make you a manager and when you become a manager you're not really focused on the technical anymore mm. all the junior people are becoming higher 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 and you know they're making all the same mistakes that you know someone who is now a manager had already made and yeah. learned <laughs> right so um yeah, it's like, yeah, it's, 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 it's a bit of a problem at the moment in the industry, but, you know. Yeah. I think yeah. that happens. I think that's quite um, common amongst the tech industry in general, like across the board in like different like fields and stuff. Even in my, in my field, it's the same. I think the, the more like you learn and the more experience you have, the more people want you to lead people. And then <laughs> if you do that, like you kind of, you don't get as much insight into the technical stuff. So I've always like maintained, like if I'm going to manage people, I still want to get involved in like the day-to-day -day sort of thing because I don't want to lose that knowledge. I want to be hands-on, right? And, yeah. And, yeah. And like, so what, so they, they, it's like, as soon as you become like so good, it's like, you have to be, you know, looking at what people are doing, talking yeah. to people, having meetings upon meetings upon meetings and not doing actual, the actual work that, you know you want to you actually enjoy it so it's uh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no it's good to know actually and so would you say in your field like is it predominantly men predominantly women or do you think that there's a balance there when i first started started out uh, in fact when i was doing computer science at uni um it was predominantly men i'm not gonna lie okay. um and um like obviously we know that that's a problem mm -hmm. um, and you want to sort of work for a company that knows that that's a problem um, yeah um so where i'm at right now we've we've managed to get a 50 50 split between okay. women and men um, um whereas other companies that i've worked at before it was more of a problem in the sense that they know it's a problem that they need more women and um uh you know people of color or whatever but is getting to tapping into that market. So I, I've noticed that, you know, women may not want to do software engineering or black people may not want to go into software engineering. So it's about getting these people in, in from the onset, like when they're at school, you know, yeah. trying to, you know, entice them into sort of the industry, you know, um, but, but yeah, it's, it's, um, it depends. It's, 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 it's male heavy, but, we're trying to change. Um, 
that's good that's good to know i think a lot of i think a lot of companies are in similar boats where they're recognizing it as an issue and trying to find ways of making it more appealing to women maybe um so it doesn't sound as though it sounds like it's a problem but it doesn't sound like there's an actual issue in the sense that actually it's difficult for women to get into it it just sounds more like perhaps maybe women aren't as interested in that field for whatever reason um as opposed to actually it's more difficult for women than it would be for a man which is um and you kind of touched on it as well but would you say that there's not a lot of black people in the software engineering world i would say there's not a lot of black people in the software yeah. engineering world. um and um i think it's also something that's also changing in the sense that um diversity is like coming up a lot is um being brought up a lot um and yeah my company's doing a lot my firm's actually doing a lot um in this field in the sense that we try and go into schools and you know try to you know show what you could the potentials what the potentials are and um yeah it's it's changing i'm not gonna lie it's changing so for you what would you say is the most fulfilling part of your role like what what can people kind of expect as well i suppose fulfillment is different for everyone but like yeah. for you what's fulfilling about the role like what do you actually enjoy about it okay i could i could say a lot of stuff around like you know like um problem solving i enjoy <laughs> problem solving which i do i do i do enjoy the challenges of solving a you know good problem um but it's also the money, the reward I get out of it is quite yeah. good. So um, yeah. I think that's fulfilling. Um, yeah. uh, but I wouldn't say to do it for the money. To do it for like you know, um, you know, you enjoy solving problems. Uh, you enjoy like you know, looking at processes and trying to um, you know come up with more efficient, efficient ways of doing things. Um, yeah, optimizing stuff. Um, so I enjoy sort of the day-to-day -day because that's what I get to do right yeah and like what would you say are like the most challenging parts so what are the parts that people should be aware of um because sometimes I feel like with jobs people can really glamorize certain roles um yeah. particularly like you say like you know it's a it's a field that sounds quite lucrative there's like loads yeah. of problem solving it sounds like a really interesting field to be in but sometimes I think people glamorize roles a lot, especially when you leave uni, glamorize things. And then when you look into it, you're like, oh no, actually it's not really like that or there's things I wish I knew first. So for your, yeah. for your um, perspective, like what kind of things would you say are quite challenging about this field that people should probably think about? So there's a lot of analysis involved, right? If you're not really good at that, doing that, right? Then you will find it hard. Um, also, um, the way it's going at the moment, um, I mean, for, for, for some years now, it's been that people would study computer science and software engineering thinking that it's just coding, coding, coding. Yeah. But there's a lot of communication involved. There's a lot of, like, you know, getting to talking and understanding the problem space that you're working on. And that can, you know, push coding to the very, very last thing that you do. Right. So, um, I think in that, in that sense, right, it's glamorized in the sense that it's, you know, most software engineers are kind of like very shy people, not very good at communicating, right? But once, they, once you get into industry and you understand, you see that, you see that playing out, you know that you need to change, to, you need to, if you can't adapt and change into that sort of person that, can communicate with people and work well with people then you will find it difficult so that's the only those are the sort of pitfalls that i can see um uh yeah you tend to have to be someone who's a very good communicator yeah uh, that's that's good so you kind of touched on it already actually but like what are like the most important skills for you that you feel that somebody who would want to be a software engineer should have perhaps maybe some skills and some personality traits you already touched on some of it but maybe a bit of both uh so i would say be very analytical um analytical have an analytical mind um, um think logically um you know like try and solve a problem in a methodical way like you know like break it down and sort of go through it methodically um 
I mentioned communication, you have to be good at that. Um, um, you have to be a very good team player because software is a team um, endeavor. Um, um, like, in fact, when you're, you're collaborating with people on a daily basis, so you have to kind of, you know, know how to do that, really. Um, what else? You have to be a quick learner, right? <laughs> so there's this thing where, you know, tech really moves very quickly, right? There's new technology coming out every day and people doing new things every day, finding out new ways of doing things. So you may learn something today and you think that's like, you know, that's the hardest thing you've learned. Like, you know, that's the way it's gonna be done for the next 10 years, but tomorrow someone will think of a better way to do it. You need to learn it again. And wow. so there's a lot of learning to it. So you need to be a quick learner. And you, obviously you can't learn everything and hold all these things in your head um, all the time. So you need to find a way to be able to condense stuff quickly and go through it quickly so that you get the gist of it. You understand the gist of it until you actually need it. So yeah. that's, that's a skill in, in itself, right? Until I actually need to do something, you don't know, this, know it deeply. Mm. You're, just, you're just aware of it and what it can do for you. So um, I think these are the sort of things that you need to have under your belt, really. Um, in terms of personality, um, I'd say, you know, being friendly, mm. being friendly, approachable, because there'll be people who don't know things, um, like juniors, um, and they will, you know, want someone who's approachable that they can ask questions, right? They don't like, you know, they don't want someone who, you know, like if I ask you questions, if I ask questions, right, they kind of, you know, you would kind of shout back, shout like, why don't you know this? You should know this, yeah. right? Like, um, so I would say be approachable um, uh, uh, and always willing to help really. That's, those are really good. Those are really good tips, guys. I hope you people are taking notes. <laughs> Have you made like any mistakes along the course of your career journey that you look back and you think, "Oh, probably wish I did that a little bit differently." And if if you have, what advice would you give to somebody coming into your field in terms of how they could avoid making the same mistakes? I say, lo I've made loads of mistakes. <laughs> it's the only way you learn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'd, I'd, I've also encouraged people to make loads of mistakes. It's the only way you learn, right? Um, um, but the, I would say not asking questions, thinking I know it, thinking I know it all, right? And then, you know, blowing up the whole world. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so <laughs> ask loads of questions. Um, um, uh, it doesn't mean that you don't know anything. Um, mm -hmm. It just means that, you know, you're trying to learn how people do things and you know understand from their point of view as well um so ask loads of questions don't presume that someone knows something mm. right and you telling them doesn't mean that you think that they don't know that they're the lesser right um so that's those are some of the, mis the mistakes that i would have made when i was um, more junior um i would presume that <laughs> everyone you know knew more than i did and then yeah. i will go and do it by myself right with my limited knowledge and then i will break everything and then get in trouble <laughs> so <laughs> ask those <loads of> questions <laughs> no that's really good really really good advice i think it's something that i struggled with for so long um only up until recently to be honest um because i feel as well i think it's important to note, like, the more senior you get in your career, the more harder it is to ask questions, I feel. Because you, you <laughs> put that pressure on yourself that, okay, but people should expect to know this. So if I come and I'm the manager asking questions, what, so the manager don't know what she's doing now? So, like, I've, I struggle with that. But then, yeah, you end up, like you say, shooting yourself in the foot. Because if you yeah. make a mistake or something goes wrong, people will just be like, okay, so why didn't you, why didn't you ask? Every, yeah, then everyone will now know that you didn't really know. Exactly. <laughs> So the, the sequel comes out in any way. So yeah, I think that's, that's such a good, really, really, really good advice. Thank you. Um, and so I suppose the last question I want to ask is like, what tips you would give to university students about to embark on their career into software engineering or even just in general? Okay, so um, I'll say practice a lot, learn a lot, um, go to conferences, you know, talk to people, network, you know, 
talk to engineers, a lot of good engineers out there who really love to go to conferences and give talks, you know, talk to them. Um, and in the process of doing that, what you'll find is that you will learn how to start filtering the noise. There's a lot of noise out there as well. So, you know, um, so yeah, like do a lot of learning, but also understand that, you know, software is not just coding. Like software in Germany is not just coding. It's, there's, there's the business aspect to it as well. You need to know that. You need to understand the business and understand that the business will mean that a lot of the time, coding will be pushed to the last thing that you do right so we want to write less code i know um, as a software engineer right code is, like people think coding coding but really and truly we writing less code is the most optimal thing so you know um right, yeah so like code is complexity right you, you don't want to introduce complexity you want to keep things simple um so um Ask loads of questions about the business, understand the business, um, why people are doing stuff, what the value of things are, right? What, like, what value, what, what's, what's this bringing to the, you know, person that's going to use this software, right? Should I be writing this code, right? Is there other ways to do this that, you know, doesn't require this much work, you know? Think about, you know, the optimal ways to do things, right? Um, and yeah, you can't go wrong like that. Always think about the business and yeah. Cool, yeah. such good advice. Thank you so much, Clement. So that brings me to my last question. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to like do this with me. Um, and thank you guys for watching as well. If you have any questions for Clements, like anything that's specific to software engineering, drop it in the comments below. I obviously don't have a clue, so I'll be going back to Clements to answer, ask him the questions on your behalf. But if there's like anything specific that you wanna know, questions that maybe I haven't asked or covered, please do leave them in the comment section and I'll be sure to let Clements know. Um, and yeah so make sure you guys stay tuned for the next episode of the career plug series make sure you like comment and subscribe and let me know what you thought of this video but yeah thank you again Clement and I'll see you guys all in the next video no problem